Hey, it's Joe Glynis, my automator, and we're going to cover what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. And let's go in here, let me use Prompt Assistant, which is our tool for you know, doing a lot of stuff. Launching things is a big part of it. This is our recently modified files. It looks back the last week. All right. Um, I think we were, this was from something from the Hero Group. We were doing a couple tests. This was actually interesting. We had a client call with a guy um, who recently joined the Hero Group, but he uh, he was doing some online trading, and the program he's using on hockey to maximize, uh, you know, restore the window, and somehow that was kind of locking up the program. We we looked into it. We were on a call with him. We couldn't see he was doing everything right. We did change it to restore to use restore instead of using the the maximize command. Um, I'm not, I haven't heard back yet to see if that fixed it. We also, after the call, looked up the send message or post message, I forget which one it was, but, um, for sending that restore command. And so either of those ways might've helped him, um, and I haven't heard back yet, but hopefully one of those stopped it because auto hotkey, of course, itself, when you use that maximize command, it's just wrapping the, like probably a send message to go tell that window to maximize, right? We just got a little, little closer to the. Um, bare bones of doing it. We also asked him to try the V1 version just to see if it's a V2 bug. Um, and again, I'm waiting to hear back on that. But that's what that was. We well, This is another client, um, Kelly. It's it's Sunday. We were on a call with him earlier. Isaiah, he's working too. And um, he's like, I don't know, should we reach out to Kelly? I'm like, Kelly's an entrepreneur. Like we, we work every day. It's just part of the, the way things go. So we're automating some reports, uh, restructuring data for them because they go through what they do, and man, they do a crap load of work manually. So we're automating that, making it much, much simpler, and of course, far less likely to have an error or a mistake. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. Um, I actually don't know what in the world that was. Past test, I don't remember. I just did a video on this one where we, we mark the active tab in Chrome, which isn't such a big deal uh, on the normal things, but if you're an incognito, there's no way to easily tell the colors are very subtly different. Um, we also did one, which I don't know if I think I covered it last week, but it may not be in here because I don't think we worked on it, is the, the same thing for site for the tabs. Uh, both of those we use UIA for, and UIA is a great tool in, in a lot of ways. It's just a bit advanced, but those two examples are very basic stuff. So if you're trying to learn UIA, those might be some you want to grab. Um, this is just our script object put into the Chrome tab. This clip share, um, we've covered this multiple times, allows us to copy and paste. We can copy, I can copy my computer, Isaiah can hit paste and paste on his computer. Uh, but we're working on another one, which we'll get into here in a few minutes, that um, shows how people can remotely, even if they don't have a synced Dropbox, which is what we use for the people at the Automator, um, our team use. But what we do is we use a, a, a FTP transfer and so the other person doesn't have to have a Dropbox account. They hit it and it does the FTP transfer and we're sharing the clip, both the clipboard that way and files. So that'll be one. I'm not sure if we'll share that with everyone because you need to have the FTP account and configure it and stuff, but um, we'll probably offer it as a service because we'll just go in and create an FTP account for you and have a password assigned. And what's cool also is like for each of our clients, we're creating an account for them. And then that clipboard and its history and everything is all, it's not the history, but the uh, it you can never go in, like Kelly is one client and Bruce is another. They won't have access to the same stuff. So it'll be the last thing that was copied for them. So it'll be um, independent. We don't have to worry. That was one of the criteria. We had several criteria. You don't have to have admin privileges. You don't have to be installing a new EXE. You don't have to have like a download of a DLL because a lot of our clients don't have admin privileges and can't do these things. So as long as you have AutoHotKey installed um, and access to the internet, of course, we're on the internet on Zoom with them anyway. So that's probably a given, right? But um, it should be pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. This file compare, let's go ahead and open that. Um, Rizwan's been working on it now here. So it's right now Windows X, which is really weird, but whatever, because you can you can come in here and you can select it, right? So I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. So what you do is you can select one file, I'm gonna hit Windows X, and this is letting me know that one's been um, selected. Now I'm gonna do it, select this one, hit Windows X, and it compares the file size of each one and tells you as a percentage, hey, this one is 4,000% bigger than this one, and this one is 2.5% of that one, right? And this bar chart, which we also broke out into a separate function, 
which we'll be releasing later on as we were we were going to customize it and show how easy you could adapt it and stuff during the hero call and that's what we're going to probably do that next week but um it makes it very simple to compare file sizes and have a visual right so the, so we're using a process bar to to, to to draw these this one it's actually got two colors we just make the background color the same as the the main gooey color so it just blends in but it's kind of a cool little way to show the the file comparisons um, because sometimes and we built into it the get active path script so i could be like inside word and hit my hotkey and it will get that active path and the file size of that file so you don't have to be an explorer right so it's going to be pretty cool and flexible sometimes you just want to compare file sizes right so that's what that's all about What's that and then let me go back to location and i'll just remember to skip past that one so here as you can see we're um, get active path is being used in that if you don't have that that's a great script because you can be in almost any program and get a hit a hotkey and get the path to that file it's very very cool um we're doing some calculations here's the test bar progress bar that was the um as i mentioned earlier so yeah and then we were doing some tests in here for the hero call um, flexifinder so rizwan which i mentioned in um in my flexifinder tool it had an issue that the hotkey in the system tray icon right here like this one if i changed it like now it's windows control v um, if i change that so let's go to options um control shift v with windows and hit apply it wasn't and actually it may not be doing it right now let's see oh no so i've reloaded it um, it wasn't updating in here it would work it just wasn't updating the gui so he's fixed that uh, we'll need to go update the download so that's built into there not that it's a big deal because you can just restart the script it works fine but that's one of those little things you realize like there's something weird going on here so yeah so you updated that um, we're using the, a couple scripts. He first started off with the getting from Explorer, but I realized for that file compare, why should we bind it to just Explorer? Why don't we use get active path to say, hey, I'm in Word. I want to compare that file to a PowerPoint file, whatever it is, right? It really, it's really makes it, opens it up and makes it very cool. Um, he was using the notify class and he wasn't too familiar with it. So he was looking at some of the examples. Um, we He also saw that I had a split path v1 script and asked if he should make a v2 and i said that's fine you know now in v2 everything is kind of a function um everything is a function but you can still use this command however i really like calling it as a function because if you when you use it with the parameters man it's just much more com complex so at some point i'll make this function available it's very simple you could walk through and create it very easily um but yeah that, that's there uh, we also made a string to map so you take a string that is parsed. We got, we discussed the general topic in the hero group because uh, who was that? Ray, I think, asked about nesting arrays and how he's, because he's learning objects and stored data storage. And we're like, well, you can do it. But I said, look, you know, it was it was more too advanced for us to go in then because I didn't want to, you know, if you learn too much at one time, it becomes overwhelming. But I said, hey, one thing you could do is put use a character in between your text like a pipe or something and then use stir split on that that way it seems like you've got nested arrays but you don't it's much easier to understand so um we borrowed that approach for the the drawing of the bar charts i said to Irfan, let, let's make this simple because when you're drawing a bar you don't just want to draw a bar on the number because we know how big numbers are usually you have you know a label or a word associated with that so instead of doing a nested complicated object or having it as a map which again isn't that complicated but for those that don't understand maps it looks a little more confusing so we've created um, a string to map function where you pass it basically key value pairs and it dumps it into a map for you which is how v2 needs it um, in order to do it a certain way so yeah that's what that is um, we covered during the hero group what an alternate data stream is in, um, and I don't have a v2 example otherwise i'd just show you but what happens is in a given file for an ntfs uh, on an ntfs drive you can save data not in the file but appended to it at that location so it's a really weird thing you can we were showing in the hero group you can write text 
and save it, quote unquote, in the file. But when you actually open a notepad, the data is not there. It's appended to the outside of it and you can transfer the files as long as it's to another NTFS drive, it works just fine. So you can use it in interesting ways, but there are some restrictions and I'm gonna leave it at that, but it's, it's still, it's a very, very cool system. The other thing is if you update that data file itself, um, you need to rewrite the data stream because it, that because of the location changes, it gets changed. And so you, you lose it unless you rewrite it. So yeah, there's, there's some, you gotta know what you're doing when you were using it. Um, we were testing it. If we would, if we would, if that data stream would get packed along when we zip the file, unfortunately it doesn't. So um, yeah, we didn't do that. This is that clip share, the private clip share I was mentioning to you earlier, where it, it's called private because it's with you and like in whoever else you give that password encrypted, you know, um, encoded address. So yeah, there's that. Um, at some point, we'll I'll do a demo video on it. Uh, like I said, maybe we'll we'll have like a subscription service for three dollars a month or something. You can use the tool and use our FTP server. Um, Res Finder. This one's really cool. Let's let me show you an update we did to it. Now we haven't updated the website yet. However, now when you launch the tool, and let's say here's where you'd be searching. So I, I don't. Do we have any dog? No. All right. Um. Folder. So this is the only tool I know of where you can search across a crapload of DLLs. That's a technical term. Crapload. Look it up. And uh, it's pretty cool because you can. Um, you know, look, we could even add color, red, actually, let's say red. We want to find things that are red or let's say green. So yeah, you get the idea, right? But you can put in, we've tagged, we paid someone to go tag these. Uh, now, let's say you want to use that to write it for your system tray icon. So you don't have a bunch of these green H's like I have right now on these two. So this actually, let's update this recently modified one. Um, let me open the V2 version of Studio first. So when I edit this file, what? It just reran it. The edit. I just hit that. There we go. So right now, there's no um, code in here that tells it what icon to use. That's why this icon is just a green H, right? Well, I'm, I'm pointing at the wrong one, but it's that one. So let's go back to the Res Finder. Let's see, for that one, oh, who cares? Let's um, try to think of a good thing to have for it. Uh, gears, who cares, right? So I'm going to double click that, and now notice it says set tray. Let's see if, um, because I have it selected here, when I go and paste that, somewhere like right around here, that, now I'm gonna save it, that is the command. Um, to use that icon number 76. Now let me run this. Looks like that reloaded. There it goes. So now see it has the, oh, I, I put it on the wrong one. I'm, I'm a moron. That was the res finder. Yeah, duh. Okay, well Gears works for that one too. Um, so you obviously you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, that was my bad. But uh, you can easily update the icon so you don't have 80 you know, green H's in your system tray. And this, this will write the code for it. Both allow you to find the one you're looking for and give you code to dump in your V2. Maybe we should have a, a V2 here and a V1 for people who are using V1. And that way it's really simple. So maybe I'll get Rizwan we'll to update that before we share it. So anyway, that's what we, the change we made in that. That was... um. Isaiah's main idea, and then I said, well, why don't we pay to have a guy go through and categorize them? And he, he put in, I think, a couple thousand or so, or 1,500 tags. So it's, it's a really, really cool tool. I mean, then Windows 11 went and changed some of the icons, so unfortunately it's not perfect. Otherwise, I, I would be all over sharing it and charging for it. But yeah, it's, um, it's a bummer on that. So let's go back in here, find where we were. So we tried several different approaches to the private, private clip share. I even talked to Geek Dude about it. He suggested some really interesting but complicated ways, and also there'd be fees involved in this FTP approach. It's very easy. It's highly reliable. Um, it's not the fastest in the world, but it seems to work fine, and it's virtually free because we already had the FTP counts. Um, we have this little temp converter. It converts... Uh, here's the v2 version it, it converts um let me just show you i'll run it and if you're interested i'll make a download out of it but here at two celsius that's 36 degrees uh, maybe we should have that run a little, little longer 
uh, but at um, 20 at 68 degrees, at 22 Fahrenheit at 72 degrees, right? So it's a quick lookup, or you can start it the other way and read the other way, right? Because I work with these guys that they all know Celsius, and it's always a pain to be like, well, wait a minute, how much is that in Fahrenheit? I don't know. So I wrote a little tool. Um, actually, that's interesting. Hold on. What is he... I wonder if that's interesting. He that somewhat looks. Let me let me look at the code. Um, oh, it is using our notify. He did it in blue just to make it. It's funny. He borrowed. He changed the colors to make it look like um, the one I had when it was just I just picked a random color. But yeah, that's our notify class, which I'll put try to remember to put the link up here. Very very cool. Very powerful. Allows you to do a lot of great stuff. What we should do, which I'll tell him to change it, is. Because the other one didn't have that. This one, we can have it. Our notify class allows for this. It runs until you, it stays up until you click it. Then it disappears, right? That'd be really cool. So, yeah. Uh, oh, good. Did he do this one? This one's really cool. Um, I, he hasn't said he's done it yet, so I'm hesitant to run it. But he hasn't told me he's done with it, so I'm not going to worry about that. There's the file compare, file size. Looks like he hasn't started this one yet. Um, he was looking at it because obviously the file changed, right? This one, it's really cool, which I'll have to explain it to him. He may not understand it. It it opens files, reads the header row, tells you, because it looks for common delimiters, tells you, hey, this is a, a CSV or a tab delimiter or whatever. And then it also tells you how many rows, even if there's like a million rows, which is really cool. And it does it very fast. So um, that's a cool thing there. Um, the screen magnifier. And actually, I need to ask, um, I had asked... Geek dude, if he has a V2 version, because I know he has a version he uses, but um, the V1 version is pretty cool. It will magnify parts of the screen wherever your mouse is, so we're creating a version 2 of that. Um, but I don't think he's done work on that. This V2 locker, I can't run this one um, because it would lock my computer screen and possibly even make me reboot in order to get out of it. So I noticed when I went to make a video on it last week, I still had some problems with it, didn't want to exit right away uh, to revert back to the screen. Um, this checklist i just made a video on that today very cool simple way to to manage your you know what you're working on and have a good checklist of something if you have a regular process you go through uh, or if you have a quick to-do list so that's that um i don't know why they added the we already had the v2 spell check i'm not sure why that was been updated but yeah that's what we've been uh working on remember we this is all we do right is is basically work on auto hockey stuff we also you know help people with their you know Tutor, tutoring and learning, but um, sometimes we do done for you to work as well. So if you want to have some things automated for you, reach out and we'll see if we can help you. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.